Welcome to Ladies Talking Business. I'm your host, Morami Akon. Our guest today is the lead photographer at Mimi Creations Studio, a child photography business that was birthed about seven years ago. She has a theatrical background with first degree in performing arts from the University of Illinois, after which she bagged a master's in theater art from the University of Lagos. She is currently running a doctorate degree in theater art at the University of Illinois. She has worked in the media industry with portfolios ranging from production assistant, content scheduler to channel manager for about seven years before she set out to do photography. Our guest is Marianne Aboshi. Thanks for joining us on the show today, Marianne. Thank you for having me. Great. So why did you carve a niche for yourself? in child photography because I know working with children is not the easiest thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so apparently I didn't even intend photography to do photography at all. And at the time when I was to have my second child and um, I had a friend who was into photography and my sister also was a photographer. And those were the major two influences. And although they were not into child photography, they were doing regular events, studio portraits and all that. But I think child photography came to me naturally because I had two little kids and as at the time I didn't have a studio and I just resigned from my last job. So I was just using my kids to take pictures and learn whatever I was being taught. And I think that was how gradually I grew to love shooting children. Interesting. So what makes the experience different with children? I mean, compared to adults. You know, with adults, you just say, oh, sit, turn this way and they turn. <laughs> Let's talk about the experience with children. Okay, for children, it's, it's pretty amazing. You're working with innocent people. They are, not, they are not going to stress you. Okay, maybe for me, they don't stress me because I'm, I'm used to be having children around. And then for adults, you can say, okay, I'm taking this picture. I want my waist slim. I want my boobs bigger. I want to look taller and all of that. You don't have all of that with children. You just shoot them the way they are. And but how about getting them to stay put? Oh, it's a lot of dancing and playing <laughs> and singing songs and rhymes and all of that. It's usually very much fun working with them. Well, <laughs> I'm surprised that you find it easier working with children. Okay, actually, let me ask you. Do you find it easier working with children than Yes, adults? I do find it easier working with children because adults and drama. With children, you don't have any form of drama. It's just innocent conversations and playful times and all of that. So it's not, it's not complex. And are they usually camera ready? No. <laughs> Except the older ones. So when you have children from, say, the age of four, five, six, seven, those ones, they already, they've planned out their shoots. They know what they want to do. They know what they want to look like. They know how they want to pose. I want to be like Princess Elsa. I want to be like um, any of the Frozen characters or any character that they already admire on TV, Barbie and the rest. Mm. So for the older ones, most times they are camera ready and they know what they want to do. But for mm. the younger ones, it's <laughs> moments. We just capture moments. Mm. We might be lucky to get smiles. We might be lucky to get giggles at some point. We might be lucky to get them in a very playful state. So Amazing. that's how it Amazing. is with kids. Okay, so what are some of the points to note before going into the business of photography? Hmm. First of all, I think you need to have an eye for photography. Because a lot of people think that photography is a, is a job where if you probably don't make it in school, maybe you are a dropout, <laughs> you just pick a camera and start shooting. Or sometimes people feel it's... When I started photography, when people come to my studio, they're like, okay, how come a woman and a, you, a woman that looks quite okay, how come she's doing photography? It almost looks like it's a line of work for the less privileged or for people who did not make it academically or did not get all, all company jobs and all of that. So I, I believe you have to have an eye for photography okay. and you have to be passionate about photography. Okay. Once you have those two, the next thing is for you to learn. You need to learn and keep learning. There's no mm. stopping points because new 
technologies come out every day, new styles of lighting, new equipment to make your work better. They come out every day, so you have to keep learning, even when you have the passion for it. You don't just stop at that mm. point. You have to keep looking out to see what more you can do to make your brand grow. Yeah, because photography has evolved. If you look at photos from 10 years ago, there's a difference um, between photos from that era to this era. So it keeps changing. Yes, it keeps changing. Photography has really, really grown. So I used to tell people that photographers are in two categories. You have the people who want to just be shooting and shooting. We call them photographers of numbers, meaning I have a studio. Anybody can walk in at any time and pay a certain amount of money and take a picture. Mm -hmm. Then we have those of us that are luxury photographers. The ones that you have to have a booking, you don't just walk into my studio mm. and say you want to shoot. All of that was not like, was not there, say like 10, 15 years ago because yeah. photography was basically you having a studio, people walking at any time, you quickly take a shot and probably even give them pictures immediately mm. and all of that. So photography has evolved over the years and I think we're on the good side of photography. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what do you think is the future of photography in Nigeria? Okay, so with the advent of um, very smartphones, mm. like the iPhone 13s and all, I, I think people who do the, what I call the regular photography, would need to, we need to really sit up, if not... Yeah, in, yes, in like two, three years, you won't have people taking pictures like that again. And people at this point are beginning to see, are beginning to see those of us that are, we call ourselves the luxury photographers, as because you cannot bring me a picture from your phone. You can never compare your picture from your phone to what I would shoot you, because it's like it, yes, <laughs> it is going to be different. It's going to be different. So there's going to be more professionalism. Yes, in more yours. professionalism with mine. So I'm not scared of being chased out of business because mm. constantly I work towards getting better at what I'm doing and not being on the wrong side. Yeah, I, I completely agree so with to you. Speak. But we'll speak more about this after the break. We will go on a quick break. Please stay with us. Thanks for staying with us. This is Steel Ladies Talking Business, and our guest is Marianne Aboshi, founder Mimi Creations Studio. All right, Marianne, um, let's talk about some of the strategies that you have devised to help you work with children. And you know, we were talking earlier about how it can be, especially with the much younger ones. So, what has worked for you in this business? Okay, so. Over the years, we've come to realize I've been able to grow a team okay. that works brilliantly with me to make this whole process very seamless as it seems. Because people look um, on my Instagram page or on my website and they're like, ah, this child is smiling. I want my child to look like this when we take a picture. And I'm like, no child looks like this when you take a picture. It might be after like 10, 15, 20 shots that we get that one lucky shot. But I have a team of, um, of staff that assist in, that are very child friendly. They play with the children. Maybe the children come into the studio. We don't just start shooting. We first try to get, get them to acclimatize to the place. We play, we ask their parents what they like. Do they like certain songs? Do they like nursery rhymes? Do they want to listen to watch cartoon or any of those? So we get to know the child, first of all, when the child comes in. And then we start relating with the child. Whoever among the team clicks with the child first. That person takes. Yes, the person <laughs> takes charge. And usually, we are three. So the guy in my system is the one who usually gets that click. Almost every child that comes in wants to play with him. And then once that happens, it's very easy on my side. Mm. So I just have to stay and be shooting pictures while he and the other person are playing. So. First of all, they call me, we get to know them, we get to know what they like, we try to do what they like and see how they can get used to the 
environment mm. before we start taking pictures. And over the years, it has worked. It has worked. It strategy. always works. Interesting. So how can one stand out in this photography industry and also remain profitable? You know the goal of every business to make profit. So how can I ensure I'm making profit in this industry? Okay, so to stay in business and to make profit in photography, in child photography, like I said earlier in the first segment, you have to keep learning. You have to keep learning because there are a lot of photo. When I started photography, there were not so many child photographers. They were a very few. I could actually count everybody who was doing child photography. But right now, the numbers are endless. And if you want to stay relevant, you have to keep being at the top of your game, meaning you have to keep learning. You have to go for workshops. You have to, to keep trying new things to make you stay afloat and stand, stay unique in the business. Because so many people are doing really pretty pictures. And you have to just keep being a step ahead by learning, learning new ideas for setups, learning new ideas to bring in clients, learning new ideas to, or learning about new equipment or new things or new plugins you can use on your system to make the pictures look exceptionally unique so that people will keep coming over. And if you have people coming over consistently, most definitely you will meet your profit margin every year, every business year. I agree. And about those people who come in consistently, how do you try to keep them? My studio, once you come in, if you, are a if you come to visit me when I have a client, you actually think that I've known the client since. So we have this very friendly atmosphere. And when you come in, we start talking. I always make sure that I leave an impression. You don't just come in and take pictures. I'm not one of those photographers that you come to the studio and they're all serious and they're all, okay, let's take this picture, let's. When you come in, we'll play with gist, I'll yab you. you yab, we'll, so there's no, when you're leaving, you leave with an impression, impression that you've, yeah. you've made a friend. So mm -hmm. even if you, don't, if you don't intend to come back, if you came not intending to come back, by the time you're leaving, we're already friends. You don't even have an option. You have to come <laughs> back. I'm, we'll deliver great pictures. So... We have the customer friendliness and we have the quality of images that you are looking for. Info. So sure, mm. you are not going anywhere. Amazing. So let's talk about this interesting bit that um, people usually have so much to talk about. Challenges you faced. Hmm. <laughs> I saw that face coming. <laughs> let's talk about some of your challenges, challenges you faced running your business so far. Okay, so... I want to start from the beginning, when I started child photography. Like I said, I started with my kids. They were really little, and I, I was learning. After learning from the guy who taught me, I would come back. Because the guy who taught me was not into child photography. He, uh, do, he was doing events and everything. So I self-taught myself child photography, from YouTube to subscribing to online, online um, foreign photographers online and following their tutorials and all. That's how I started doing child photography. Because as as when I started child photography, like I said earlier, there were just a few people. And when you call, reach out to people and say, please, uh, I'm, I'm a child photographer. I'm trying to, to do child photography. Could you please, can I come over to your studio? I want to, how do you do your background? How do you? Nobody. Nobody. Mm. It was a major challenge. And if not that I'm a very persistent person. I probably would have just stuck to doing events because at a point I was doing a lot of events and I was doing portraits since I wasn't, I couldn't figure out what they were doing in particular. Nobody was ready to teach anybody. Teach, yeah. Nobody was ready to teach anybody. It was a very big challenge. Thankfully, YouTube, foreign photographers who would give their tutorials out at a cost. Mm. I was doing all of that and over time, I started understanding, and then I started being very creative. So when I see, for instance, backdrops that they use, I'm like, how did they get these backdrops? And I'm saying, okay, you have to probably go online and order it. It might take like three weeks or take one month to get to Nigeria and all of that. And then I came up with my own way of doing it. I improvised. Mm. Background, I have my background in theater arts. From set ah. designs, to costume, <laughs> to makeup, to mm -hmm. all the things you do to make believe, all the arts and acts of the theater. 
I have that as background. So it was really helpful in making me being creative and improvising on, such, on so many of those things. As time went on and I started becoming known and other photographers are like, okay, there's an immigration somewhere. At that point, people started opening up. But already... It was too late. You already got it. Too late. <laughs> it was too late. So it was really, really challenging. Another challenging part of photography. As I, back then, maybe five years ago, photography was better, better in terms of cost. It wasn't so expensive to get a gear. It wasn't mm. so expensive to get lights or to get memory cards or any of the things that you need. But now, no. oh. dollar, Lord. <laughs> If you are starting photography now, you had better be related to a very rich, to be, to be related to a very rich person. Because really? you cannot just get up from the streets and say you want to do photography right now True. because of how exchange rate has affected the cost of everything. A brand new camera, a fairly good brand new camera you would have bought like two years ago for 450K, you will get like for 700K, fairly used, not new anymore. Wow. So right now, it's a big challenge for, especially photographers that are just coming, coming up. up. Luckily yeah. for me, I've gotten most of what I, I would need from the beginning part. Wow. Well, well, we'll <laughs> talk more about this after the break. More conversations with our... I'm still here with Marianne of Mimi Creations Studio. So Marianne, so you've been in this industry for seven years and counting. What um, major improvements would you like to see in this industry? Okay, so when you're talking about the industry, I'm, I'm thinking child photography, child photography. Okay, specifically. Child photography. Okay, so you want to limit it to child photography? Yes. Okay, yeah, that's fine. So uh, I would think maybe there should be a body of child photographers. Is there a body of photographers, first of all? No. Okay. But because child photographers were mostly female, so I'm, I'm sure something can be, and we mostly know each other. Then you guys should set up the body. Mm -hmm. So, so <laughs> but it's not going to be me. <laughs> I will be the person to set it up, but it would be a good idea to, to have a, a body that sort of brings us together and help to learn from each other. I know the concept of learning from another photographer is almost impossible because everybody likes to kind of hide something. Hide okay, this own. is my strong point. This is my, my own style and all of that. But I, I think having a, having a body that can help us to push things further and help other people grow, help us grow, those of us that think we are there, per se, help us grow and help other people grow. I think it would be a fantastic so idea. Are you open to training people? Yes, I do them. train people. Okay. I do train people already, so I'm open to training people. Okay. So a major improvement, you like to have a body that regulates and trains and yes. oversees how child photography works. Yes. What else? Mm. Because mm. most people... Well, except you are very savvy. If you want to, <laughs> if you want to take um, photos of your kids, you probably would not even think of going to a child photographer. You just want to go to any photographer, right? Yes, because until recently, many people did not understand why there should be a genre called child photography. Yeah. It took a lot of time and educating when clients come in, and I say I'm a child photographer. And they are like, okay, I don't understand. I want to take pictures of myself. I do take pictures of adults, though, but I push out child photography because that is what I want to be my niche. My niche. Mm -hmm. That's why I, I don't push out adult pictures and all of that. But it took a lot of educating. And right now, in Lagos especially, a lot of people know that there's a difference between a regular photographer and a child photographer. And some three, four years back, you will have to be explaining, explaining. Most I remember when I first got my studio, someone came in to make an inquiry, and the person asked, and I told the person I do child photography, and the person said, oh, you're not hungry yet. The person said it to you, but I said, when you're hungry, you will snap anything that you see. Uh-uh. And I'm like, oh, 
Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know that was offensive to you. Really? <laughs> so, yes. So I think it took a lot of educating. But now with Instagram and a lot of other platforms, so many people are seeing that there are actually people who do strictly children. Mm -hmm. and, and they can actually see the difference. And they can really. see the difference because a regular photographer, when you walk in, just wants to take your picture and you walk out. A child photographer mm -hmm. is patient with you. Sometimes your child needs to sleep, they let your child sleep. Sometimes your child needs to eat and maybe it takes maybe like 20, 30 minutes to feed the child and clean the child up and a child photographer will wait for you. There's time for all of that. You can't get there anywhere. So roughly how many hours does a session take for child photography? So all things being equal, two to three hours, all things being equal, sometimes you will postpone the rest of the shoot till the next day or another free date that you have because the child is probably too cranky mm, or the child or is running or temperature yeah. or the child is is sleepy and all of that so you must commend your patience <laughs> and all of this <laughs> okay so let's talk about photography give us can you tell us some interesting facts about photography that we laymen that are not into photography may not know about okay so one of it that usually cracks me up is if you notice older pictures, like say 80 years ago mm. kind of pictures, you, you will not catch any, you don't see any picture where somebody is smile, smiling. And that is because then they used to do very large, they used to use large format cameras to shoot. Okay. And those ones, you, could, you can be in the process of shooting for the next one hour, you've not taken one picture. So mm -hmm. you have to just stay still like this and not move. Mm. So you can imagine somebody having to smile for all of that period. And that's why if you look at very old pictures, you see that all of them have this straight face and they are all like very there's rigid. A posture, there's yes, a and then don't move. You, you can't move because if you move, while the camera is trying to process the image, you distort it and you cannot start getting blurry images. So sometimes you have to use a cape to hold them in one place. So that used to be very funny. I'm, I'm glad I was now in that age. <laughs> in that era. Because I always tell my clients, smile, smile, please, smile. So it wouldn't have been funny. Then another thing. So many people used to feel that the left side of their face is their most flattering side. And that is because it is believed, or it has been researched, basically, that your left side shows, intensifies more emotions. So if you're smiling, your smile looks better on this side. Right. So people generally just say, oh, this is my good side. This is, my good, this is not my good side. This is my good side. Okay, yes. so which is my good side? All sides. <laughs> <laughs> All sides. <laughs> and, okay, so another fact. Okay, photography mm -hmm. from, it was gotten from the Greek word photographia, which, usually, which meant drawing with light. And basically, right. that's what we do. So without light, you cannot shoot. You cannot take a, a good picture. So photography is basically using light to draw an image. Hmm. OK, so your light is very important in photography. Yes, not necessarily, phys not necessarily physical light. It could be sunlight. It could be sunlight mm. or any source of light. Mm. Window from your window from any point. So light is key to photography. Amazing, amazing. I've learned one or two things about <laughs> photography and child photography today, Marianne. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. Thanks for watching this episode of Ladies Talking Business. Do join us this same time next week for another episode. And don't forget to follow us on Plus TV Africa Lifestyle on YouTube to catch up with our programs. I am Morimi Akonwo. Bye for now.